join the conversation, visit our website at listenuptv.com. You'll find video clips, blogs, and feedback so you can get information that takes you deeper on this and other issues. That's listenuptv.com. As soon as we become quiet, we become passive, and we allow someone else's opinion to take over our opinion. So it's so important that we, we communicate what we think, because if we don't, someone else will. Welcome back. Listen Up is looking at the new framework for the abortion debate in Canada. In the more than two decades that this country has been without an abortion law, there's been a growing respect among those in the medical community for life in the womb. Here to tell us more about the medical advancements that have made that kind of knowledge possible is Dr. Dan Riley. He teaches at McMaster University where he teaches medical students and doctors on ethics in obstetrics and gynecology. Dr. Riley, thanks for being with us. You're welcome. Now tell us about the imaging technologies and how they've changed this debate. What are they teaching us? Well, what they've shown us is how clearly we can see things. Uh, we can see movement starting around 12 weeks. Uh, you can actually see the fetus reacting to sound starting around 20 weeks. Uh, and we have amazing pictures. We can say, if you're at this stage of development, then this is exactly what the fetus looks like, uh, and this is what you can see. Uh, and the pictures have a lot of power. Tell us about what technology has taught us now about the development of the fetus's brain. What do we know? So, what do we know? We know that you can begin to see structures that will become the fetal brain around seven weeks, uh, which is very early. A lot of women don't even know they're pregnant at that stage. Uh, and around nine weeks, uh, you can begin to see brain activity with brain waves by about 12 weeks. And again, by 20 weeks, the fetus is reacting. So to sound, uh, to vibration, and you'll actually see movements and reactions uh, from the fetus, showing us that, that the brain is aware of the environment that it's in. So with the advancements in medical care, what is the youngest that a child, a fetus, can, can survive? There are, there are case reports at 21 and 22 weeks, uh, which is about halfway through pregnancy. At 23 weeks, when the fetus crosses about 500 grams, survival becomes something you can hope for. Um, still better than half of babies at 23 weeks don't make it, and the ones that do make it have a lot of disabilities. So 21, 22 weeks, there's case reports, 23 weeks we start to to hope for it, and certainly by 26 to 27 weeks, survival almost always happens. Okay, another area, mm -hmm. um, because we have a legal vacuum on this completely in Canada, mm -hmm. sex selection mm -hmm. is happening mm -hmm. uh, with the unborn child, and statistical evidence in some Canadian communities that mm -hmm. girl babies are being aborted. Mm -hmm. How is the medical community dealing with that concern? Well, the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada, which is our national body, and many of the provincial colleges that have looked at it have said that that's not acceptable behavior. Um, that termination for sex selection uh, is below standard of care, uh, and that a practitioner who performs terminations knowing that the only reason they're doing it is because of the gender of the fetus uh, is at risk of professional discipline. So the profession has said this is not Allowed. going to be something that we will allow. That it still happens, again, there's statistics, there's, there's indirect evidence that it is occurring. Patients can um, tell a physician whatever they want when they present requesting procedures. Um, professionally, we've decided that this is not something that we're going to participate in. All right, mm -hmm. the next question. Um, what do we do about um, understanding the risks for pregnant women who do abort? We work hard to get safe abortions, mm. but what about the risks that even still exist? What are they? So in terms of the short term, it's the risk of doing surgery. Um, so there's a risk of infection and a risk of bleeding and a risk of damaging the womb or the bladder or the bowel, the other organs that live in the same space. And anytime um, I do surgery or anyone does surgery, there's, those risks are there. Um, those risks are very small, and usually those complications are very short term. Um, in the longer term, uh, there's again lots of research that's been done. We have two things that we're pretty certain of. One is that a woman who's had a termination is at increased risk uh, after that of mental health issues and suicide. What's unclear is did the mental health issues lead to the unwanted pregnancy? 
and hence there's an association, so the chicken and egg problem, which came first, uh, or was it the termination that led to that? We also know that women who've had terminations have a slightly increased risk of complications in future pregnancies, so delivering babies that are smaller and delivering a little early. And again, it's unclear that we've, there's, a, there's a connection, but is it something else, something like poverty, say, that leads to unwanted pregnancy and also to these complications? Dr. Riley, will technology resolve the abortion debate? I don't think so. Um, the question is essentially a moral question, uh, and most people's opinion on it flows out of their understanding of what it means to be human and what it, the nature of morality is. Are we created beings or are we bi simply biological beings? Is morality absolute? Is morality relative? And technology informs the debate and provides knowledge, but that knowledge gets interpreted by how you view the world. And until we decide on uh, when human life begins and, and what does it mean to be human and, and how morality works, we're not going to, until those big questions get settled, we're not going to settle this question. Thank you very much. All right. When we come back, a whole new generation stakes out a claim in the abortion issue. We'll hear why they want the debate reopened after this. Um, because abortion affects everyone. It affects the older, gen older generation and it also affects my generation. A third of my generation never made it out of the womb, so it's really important.